Welcome to this episode of Beaten and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. In this episode, we're talking about the weekend's race at Darlington and a couple of interesting stories that came out of it, both on the winning Hendrick Motorsports organization, including a piece of breaking news from Jeff Gordon's post-race interview in Victory Lane. Before we talk about that item, let's talk about the biggest story outside of HMS driver William Byron winning the race on the track Too Tough to Tame, and that's the major news item, which is becoming a weekly drama, including already discussing it once on this channel, and that's Ross Chastain finding himself in another feud. Chastain and Kyle Larson got tangled up on a restart with six laps to go on Sunday when the track house car drifted up the track and tried to squeeze the number five, but failed, and instead turned himself into the outside wall. The number one car collected the 2021 champion who turned him into a hood ornament and drove down the track with Chastain on his front bumper. That could have ended poorly, but it didn't. I reached out to NASCAR for comment on whether Larson's actions might be worthy of a penalty and have yet to hear back. Larson's crew chief, Cliff Daniels, was irate over the team radio when it happened. He wasn't the only one unhappy. Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon didn't attempt to hide their frustrations in the post-race celebration. I think you can ask any driver in here that he's wrecked to have been involved with him. He, you know, he doesn't have to be that aggressive. And I guess at this, at this point in the race, maybe you're, you're super aggressive, but you just don't run people up in the fence or, you know, just he's not going to, he's going to make a lot of enemies. That it's hard to win a championship when you got a lot of paybacks out there. And uh, so I, he's got so much talent. I think if he just calmed down that uh, there's a time to race. Dale Earnhardt uh, told me, Dale Earnhardt Sr. told me one time, he said, you know, I won't name the driver who drove for me, but he said, uh, you know, he's got all the talent. He just doesn't know how to race. And, uh, and meaning he just knows when to race, when to push it. Uh, he's got a lot of talent, but he's making a lot of enemies out here. While Jeff Gordon was with Rick Hendrick in the post-race press conference, he shared his thoughts when asked by Sirius XM NASCAR radio reporter Claire B. Lang. It is a unique situation because of our ties, you know, with Chevrolet and, and how we all, you know, key partners like the One Car and, uh, and, and Hendrick, we all work together like we do with Childress and, and Trackhouse. So, you know, it, it makes the dynamic very, very difficult because we're all trying to share information to make the, the whole uh, group better and stronger. And I think we are because of it. That's why we're, we're as competitive as we are. But when you get, you know, a competitor that is like Ross, putting it that far out on the edge and, and you know, maybe taking it too far. Um, you know, that, that, that's something he's going to have to deal with because the other competitors, are, I think, are, you know, really taking notice and, and going to make, you know, life. You, you just can't make that many enemies out there. Moments later, when Lang pressed Gordon on what could be done about it and whether or not Chevrolet might get involved in some capacity, the former driver answered the question, but first brought up something that happened on a previous restart before the contact between Larson and Chastain and how the sanctioning body got it all wrong. Well, I mean, I think what you saw there on the track was well, a couple things. One, I think NASCAR completely missed the call on the restart. I, I think that was a jump start by, by the one, but that's a whole nother situation. And then Let's switch gears and focus on that other situation. Gordon is saying that NASCAR got the restart wrong and the number one, who was not the lead car because Kyle Larson was, jumped too soon. HMS Vice President of Competition Chad Knauss later visited with Lang in Victory Lane, and he said the data indicated Chastain had in fact jumped the restart. However, according to Racer.com's Kelly Crandall, NASCAR reviewed the restart and said it was close, but there was no infraction. While NASCAR is insisting Chastain didn't jump the start, multiple angles of video evidence disagree and clearly show without a shadow of a doubt that the track house car did indeed start prematurely. Not to mention, Clint Boyer pointed it out in real time on Fox's broadcast. Man, 
Chastain, that was a pretty Ooh. good jump for the outside there, the second place car. Oh! Of all the angles, there's one in particular that I think is the best one. It really couldn't be any more clear. Take a look. Chastain definitely jumps before the end of the restart zone. How NASCAR didn't rule this a violation is confusing to say the least. What's interesting is to play out the scenario if NASCAR did get it right and did penalize Chastain and sent him to the rear. That changes everything. Maybe Larson goes on to win. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe Byron still wins. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about both Larson Chastain incidents. Do you agree Chastain got the jump on the restart? What do you think about Jeff Gordon and Rick Hendrick's comments on the crash and Chastain starting it? Do you think HMS drivers will be paying back the track house driver in the future? It will definitely be an interesting story to follow. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks again for your time today. If you want to read more stories like this video, be sure and check out my articles on sportscasting.com. I'll also include a link in the description. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great rest of your day.